Summary of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban by J.K. Rowling Harry Potter is attempting to finish his summer homework on medieval witch hunts, but he is forced to do it in secret at night so that his aunt and uncle, Petunia and Vernon Dursley, do not discover what he is doing. Harry notices that it is now after midnight, which means that it is now his birthday. He looks out his window and sees three owls flying toward him. They bring gifts from Ron, Hermione, and Hagrid, who are his friends. He also gets a form to be signed by a protector that lets him go to Hogsmeade while he is at school. The next day, Harry hears on the news about a prisoner named Sirius Black and finds out that his Aunt Marge is coming to visit. She treats Harry badly. Harry gets through her visit by remembering the deal he made with Vernon, if Harry acts well, Vernon will sign the Hogsmeade form. Harry loses his anger on Marge's last night, blows her up like a bubble, and then leaves the house. He sees a big black dog and calls the night bus by mistake. Stan, a worker on the bus, says that Sirius Black got away from the magic jail Azkaban, where he was locked up for killing 13 people with a single curse. When Harry gets off the bus at the Leaky Cauldron, he meets Cornelius Fudge, the Minister of Magic, who doesn't kick Harry out for doing magic in front of muggles. Harry stays at the Leaky Cauldron for the next three weeks and walks around Diagon Alley. On the last day of summer break, he finally meets Hermione and Ron. He goes with them to a shop for magical creatures so Hermione can buy an owl and Ron can get medicine for Scabbers. Crookshanks, a big orange cat, tries to eat Scabbers in the shop and Hermione buys him. Harry overhears Mr. and Mrs. Weasley talking about how Sirius Black wants to kill him after dinner. The next day, Harry tells Ron and Hermione on the train, in a room where only Professor Lupin, the new defense against the dark arts teacher, was sleeping. The train stops after a few hours, and people get on. When one of the people opens the door to Harry's room, he passes out and hears a woman screaming. Lupin gets rid of the Dementor and gives out sweets. McGonagall calls Harry and Hermione to her office so Harry can get chocolate, but Harry doesn't know what she says to Hermione. Hermione's plan looks weird because she has classes at the same time. Professor Trelawney teaches divination, which comes first. She says that Harry will die because she sees the Grimm, which is a sign of death, in his tea leaves. After lunch, Hagrid teaches the three of them care of magical creatures. He tells the kids from Gryffindor and Slytherin about hippogriffs. Malfoy makes fun of Buckbeak, a hippogriff, and Buckbeak hits Malfoy. Malfoy shows up late to potions later that week and acts like he is hurt. Lupin will teach defense against the dark arts to the Gryffinders next. Lupin gives a hands-on lesson on how to fight Boggets, which take the form of each person's worst fear. Before Harry can speak, Lupin stops the lesson. A few weeks later, Quidditch practice starts and the first Hogsmeade weekend is announced. Crookshanks jumps up to eat Scabbers as Harry, Ron, and Hermione talk about Hogsmeade. The next day, while Ron and Hermione are in Hogsmeade, Harry walks around the halls. Lupin finds him and asks him to come to his house for tea. He says that he didn't let Harry fight the Boggett because he didn't want Voldemort to show up and scare everyone. Snape comes in to give Lupin a burning glass that looks suspicious. As everyone goes upstairs after the feast, they find out that Sirius Black tried to break into Gryffindor Tower and destroyed the fat lady's picture. Dumbledore tells all the students to sleep in the Great Hall and gives the job of guarding the Gryffindor portrait hull to a picture of a hero named Sir Cadogan. The next day, Harry is late to defense against the dark arts class and finds Snape in Lupin's place. Snape explains what werewolves are to the class. The next day is the first Quidditch game. Gryffindor instead plays Hufflepuff instead of Slytherin. The weather is terrible, and Harry has a terrible time. He sees the black dog again, and as he chases the snitch, he passes out because of all the dementors in the field. When he wakes up in the hospital wing, the team tells him that he fell off his broom and Hufflepuff won. Hermione tells Harry that his broom was broken by the Whomping Willow. Lupin tells Harry later that week, after Lupin's class, that he is so affected by the Dementors because his past is so dark. 
Harry admits that when he sees them, he hears Lily crying. Harry asks Lupin if he can teach him how to fight Dementors, and Lupin says that he will. On the Saturday before Christmas, there will be another trip to Hogsmeade. Fred and George pull Harry away after he says goodbye to Ron and Hermione. They give him the Marauder's Map, which shows everyone at Hogwarts and secret ways out of the school. In the Three Broomsticks, Harry finds out by accident that Sirius Black is his godfather and that he betrayed his parents. Harry is angry, and the next day he says he wants to get even. He goes to Hagrid to talk to him about his silence but the three of them find out that Buckbeak's case will be sent to Lucius Malfoy's committee for the disposal of dangerous creatures. Harry gets a firebolt race broom for Christmas, but there is no note with it. Crookshanks tries again to kill Scabbers, and Hermione tells McGonagall about the firebolt after Christmas dinner. McGonagall takes the broom away so she can check it for jinxes, and Hermione says she thinks Sirius Black gave it to her. Harry and Ron are so mad at Hermione that they don't talk to her for days, and Harry has his first individual lesson with Lupin. They help a boggit because it will become a Dementor. Harry tries to summon a Patronus spell to beat it, but he can't. This goes on for a month without getting better. When McGonagall gives Harry the firebolt back, things start to get better. Just minutes after Harry and Ron decide to make up with Hermione, Ron finds blood on his sheets and thinks that Crookshanks ate scabbers. Harry thinks that Ron and Hermione are no longer friends. Gryffindor beats Ravenclaw in the next Quidditch game, and Harry makes a Patronus when three Dementors appear on the field. However, the Dementors are actually Malfoy and his friends dressed up as Dementors. Harry goes to sleep that night, but Ron's scream wakes him up a few minutes later. Ron woke up to find Sirius Black with a knife. Sir Cadogan says that he did, in fact, let Black into the common room. The next day, Hagrid sends Harry and Ron an offer to have tea with him. He tells them to forgive Hermione while they are there. When the boys get back to the common room, they see that there will be another trip to Hogsmeade the following weekend. Harry agrees to wear the Cloak of Invisibility. On the morning of the trip, Snape stops him for a short time, but he is able to find Ron in Hogsmeade. But when Harry throws mud at Malfoy at the Shrieking Shack, the cloak slips and Malfoy sees Harry's face. Snape tries to punish Harry as soon as he gets back, but Lupin sticks up for him and takes the Marauder's Map. On their way back to the common room, Harry and Ron run into Hermione. She has a note from Hagrid that says he lost Buckbeak's trial. The next few days, Hermione acts strangely. She hits Malfoy, forgets to go to charms, and walks out of divination. A week later, Gryffindor beats Slytherin in the ugliest Quidditch game Harry has ever played and gets the Quidditch Cup. The three find out that Buckbeak's last plea will be at Hogwarts on the last day of their tests. It's time for the test. Harry finds divination the most strange because, during his private test, Trelawney tells him that Voldemort's helper will go back to Voldemort. That night, Hagrid writes to tell Buckbeak that he lost his case. Under the invisibility cloak, Harry, Ron, and Hermione sneak down to Hagrid's hut. Hermione finds Scabbers in a milk jug, and Hagrid kicks them all out before the execution party comes. They hear the axe drop about halfway back to the castle, and Scabbers runs away. Ron catches Scabbers under the Whomping Willow, but a big black dog grabs Ron and pulls him into the tree's roots. Crookshanks stops the tree so Harry and Hermione can follow. They go through a cave and enter the Shrieking Shack, where they find Sirius Black and Ron. Harry tries to fight Black because he is so angry. They hear someone downstairs, and Lupin runs up the stairs while Hermione screams for help. He hugs Black and Hermione screams that he's a monster because of this. Lupin confirms this and then says something that doesn't make sense, he saw on the Marauder's map that Harry, Ron, Hermione, and a fourth person went into the Whomping Willow. Peter Pettigrew is an animagus who can change into a rat and has been living as scabbers for the past 12 years. Lupin and Black explain that Black, Pettigrew, and James Potter became Animagi as students to keep Lupin company while he turned into a werewolf. Snape shows up out of nowhere, 
but Harry, Ron, and Hermione beat him up. Lupin and Black make Scabbers change into the person Peter Pettigrew. Black says that Pettigrew lied to Harry's parents and put Black in a bad light. Harry believes Black's story, and the group heads back through the tube so they can turn Pettigrew in. Harry agrees to move in with Black, but Lupin changes into a werewolf out in the night, and Pettigrew runs away. Harry and Hermione find Black by the lake, and Dementors swarm around them. The Dementors are scared away by a real Patronus. Harry and Hermione hear Fudge and Snape talking about Black when they wake up in the hospital wing. They try to tell Snape and Dumbledore the truth, but Dumbledore sends them all away and tells Hermione that they need more time. With the help of a necklace, Hermione sends Harry three hours back in time. She says this is how she has been getting to school all year. They figure out that Dumbledore also wants them to save Buckbeak, so Harry takes him away from the executioner. Harry tells Hermione that he saw James bring the Patronus into being. Harry, Hermione, and Buckbeak hide in Hagrid's hut when Lupin turns into a werewolf. Harry sneaks out to see his dad, but when he gets there, he learns that he is the one who made the Patronus. It's a huge deer. He and Hermione fly Buckbeak to the right window, find Black, and send him away with Buckbeak a few minutes later. Just in time, they get back to the hospital wing but Snape is very angry that Black got away. Harry finds out the next day that Lupin quit after Snape told everyone that he is a werewolf. Harry goes to see his father one last time and finds out that his father's animagus form was a stag. Dumbledore comes to say goodbye to Lupin, and after Lupin leaves, he claims that the trip back in time was a success. Harry is sad until a small owl brings him a letter from Black when he is about halfway home. It has a message that lets Harry go to Hogsmeade and tells Ron that he can keep the owl. About the author. Rowling was born in 1965 in Yate, Gloucestershire to a middle-class family. Her parents were Anne and Peter James Rowling. She was the first of two children, and she said that she was a very sad teen. Her mother had multiple sclerosis, and her relationship with her father was tense. She got her degree from the University of Exeter in 1986. After that, she worked in London as a writer and a secretary. In 1990, she came up with the idea for the first Harry Potter book and started writing it right away. In December of that year, Rowling's mother died, and she put a lot of her sadness into the book. Rowling got married, had her first daughter, got separated, and signed up for welfare payments over the next few years. She finished writing Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone in 1995, and when it came out in 1997, Rowling's popularity started to grow. Rowling was able to buy a flat in Edinburgh with the money from the US sale for the publishing rights. She then spent the next 10 years writing and releasing the next six books in the series. In 2001, she remarried and had two more children. In 2004, she became the first person to become a billionaire by writing books. She co-founded the charity Lumos and established the Volant Charitable Trust, named after her mother. She has written a number of crime books under the name Robert Galbraith, and she has also written scripts for the Fantastic Beasts movies. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.